Hello viewers, this is Thorn of Night, and welcome to my next Minecraft video. Uh, this time I've created what I call a melon timer. What this thing does is it turns random growth of a melon or pumpkin into a redstone pulse. By that description, I'm sure it's been done before, however, this has some added bonuses. Uh, for instance, let's say you're building an adventure map and you want a rare or single trigger, trigger world event However, you don't want a massive clock running in the background chewing up resources the whole time with the chance of a redstone torch messing up. Or, say you want an item to be dispensed or a door to be open at somewhat frequent but unpredictable intervals. The solution is by using plants. And, since melons and pumpkins are solid blocks, the timers on this machine automatically reset. But maybe neither of these things appeal to you. Maybe you just want to have a farm that tells you when all of your plants have finished sprouting. Well, that's what this does. Um, the best part about it is it's completely modular. It can be as long or as short as you want. The longer it is, the more accurate uh, you can have your clock. The uh, shorter it is, the uh, more reliant you are on just chance. But, here's the demonstration. First, I'm going to start off with the 16 melon long uh, timer that I have here. I have it set to output into this really long linear AND gate that outputs through this block to here. And it waits for all of the melons to be uh, completely grown. So, there's that, that, and that. It automatically resets the whole machine and puts the output through whatever you want. It could be a T flip flop or... or some other series of logic circuits for adding to some other machine. Uh, that's up to you. However, the output for the AND gate is made to run right alongside the, I guess you'd call it an OR gate. Uh, this here when I have it set up to come through this block for the output instead of over there, uh, whenever any one melon sprouts, it pulses the machine. So, and you get an added bonus of some melons and some pumpkins. But for the rest of this video, I'm going to turn this back to the long duration so that doesn't keep going off the whole time. All right, this here is one unit of the modular device. This is just to power the machine, and this here is just to reset the machine. What you need to build this first are some melon seeds, some bone meal if you want some, a hoe of some sort, water source, and something to block the growth of the melon to only force it to grow in one spot. I use torches because it gives light. So first what you need to do, till the dirt, Plant the seed, bone meal it if you want. Then, you need a repeater. You need to power that repeater. I have a redstone torch already there. Oh, wrong spot. This is where the melon will grow, so put some torches here, 
put another redstone repeater and then the block you're powering. Now this block here powers in two directions. The first one sends the power straight through to output in this line here. The second one goes up this flight of stairs. It's five high. and powers this sticky piston with a solid block here. Between each of the units you are going to need some redstone repeaters. And you're going to need to power the AND gate from one end using this. That way, when something does grow here, power goes up, kicks this on, sends the power through here to this, waits for this to kick on, and then all the criteria are met to send power to here. Then for the reset, you need to have a piston just above where the melon grows. And I fill this in with water for all of them so that there's water within the range of the, uh, the farmland and so that you can actually go down and look up to place the piston. Then all you have to do is just wait for melons to grow. Now, for the reset machine, on this one it doesn't really make much of a difference, but on these longer ones you have to set up repeaters. Always remember that you can't set the repeater directly above where the piston goes, otherwise it won't trigger the piston. So you can set it between pistons, and presto the machines reset. Now, I have a toggle on this one that switches between the two different outputs. This is just a simple lever. that pushes a solid block to let it choose. That way, when the power comes out through here, for the inside single row, it outputs instantly through there. Or, in this position, it waits for the entire series to uh, activate. Now, this and gate here is what you're going to use if you just want to have a farm that uh, lets you know when everything is done sprouting that way uh, it doesn't automatically mash the melons or pumpkins and uh, you have to wait for or you have to get back to it before the uh, items disappear this way you can just know when it's done press a button or, or flip a lever, whatever, and then go through and collect all your stuff. Now, if you want just a farm that uh, is a short interval trigger, and you're not concerned about uh, gathering the, uh, the melons, set the time back to day here, then one major difference is these don't have to be two apart. You, the melons, uh, if I had a uh, melon plant here, the melon could grow there and it would count towards both of these uh, melon plants. However, with this torch it will only grow in that direction for this melon. And that's why I have two spaces in between. But 
you don't need two spaces in between if you're not concerned with the long duration setup. So around here, I have a 32 melon patch that is one space in between. Power coming in on this side. The melon sprouts. And if you can watch this closely, it attaches on both sides to the melon sprouts. And it's pretty random. Uh, obviously, it's limited to the number of ticks and uh, the decision on, on what plants grow at that time, then which melon plants specifically uh, are going to grow for that duration. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty unpredictable. I've sat here and waited for several minutes uh, for it to do something. And as you saw just a moment ago, it can happen back to back to back. But, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I guess uh, if you have any ideas to add to this, leave a, a response or a comment in the uh, comment section below. Uh, don't forget to rate and subscribe. I've got a lot more coming. And uh, I guess I will uh, see you next time. Bye.